Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouse Shock. I'm Corey and that is perhaps the most fun you can have in a rear wheel drive sports car at $35,000. That is the 2023 Toyota GR86. And this co-production with Subaru and their BRZ starts at under $30,000 making it a really fun rear wheel drive sports car. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of our $34,000 premium model and show you what makes it just so special. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, first things first, I wanna to thank Toyota for bringing this to us to test for a week for you here on the channel. But since I've got the hood propped up with the prop rod, Go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. No, that is not a Toyota engine. As you can see on there, yes, it says Toyota, but this is a Subaru-derived powertrain. This is their 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder boxer engine, making 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque routed to those rear wheels through, in our version, a six-speed automatic, but you can get a manual transmission We've actually track tested one with manual transmission and found it to be a lot of fun. This six speed automatic does have intelligent dynamic rev match management with its paddle shifters. And this uh, premium model has a Torsen limited slip rear differential. And this whole vehicle has a track mode so you can turn off all that stability control. This uh, little 228 horsepower 184 four cylinder uh, is good for zero to 60 runs in 6.6 .6 seconds, which really isn't all that bad. This is a small and light vehicle, making those power numbers that are relatively low uh, produce some really good results. But we'll talk more about this uh, when we get out on the drive. It is uh, limited to 134 mile per hour top speed. The suspension, we've got a McPherson strut front and a multi-link rear. And Toyota and the team over at Gazoo Racing put circuit-tuned coil spring shock absorbers, iron front knuckles in it, and have a rear suspension member-mounted stabilizer bar. So there's a lot going into this, making it more than just a little uh, Subaru Forester engine stuffed into a small and light rear-wheel drive car. So closing the small and light hood, you can take in the styling of this Toyota GR86, which is very similar to its Subaru cousin and uh, the BRZ, but definitely has its own distinct character. And like I said, we do have very distinct sports car proportions on this, even if that engine really is like a Subaru Forester uh, engine crammed into a small and light car. There's a lot to be said about that, but We'll take a look at the styling up front here. Very nice, very familiar. You get the Toyota logo up here. Fairly nice grill opening here that is half closed and half open to get air back into the radiator back there. And then taking a look here on the side, these vents are open, uh, allowing that air curtain to get air around the front of the vehicle for better aerodynamics. We'll come around to the passenger side here to check out the wheels and tires on. Again, we have the more expensive premium option. So we get these uh, really cool black painted alloy wheels uh, that really stand out, or in this case, don't against our black paint job, but they are wrapped in Michelin 215-40 R18 Pilot Sport 4 tires. So very aggressive tires here on this small and light sports car, which also contributes to some of its driving fun and driving behavior. If you've been a fan of uh, the Grand Tour or Top Gear, you know James May is a big fan of vehicles at their limits. And well, these tires definitely make you feel a little more uh, stuck and glued to the road. I wonder what a cheaper tire would feel like on this car, uh, if it would make it more fun because you could slip and slide it out. Interestingly enough, we are also testing the 2023 Nissan Z out while we have this car, and it's got Bridgestone Potenzas. And I think it could really do with some of these Michelin Pilot Sport four tires. Coming around to the side, you can see we've got the long hood, short deck lid proportions. This is actually a two plus two seater, so you can, in theory, get four people inside. We'll talk more about that later. 
Talking about aero bits and how air goes around this vehicle, this is also a functional air vent right here. You can see our blacked out model also gets blacked out GR badging right here. And a lot of attention went into getting air around and over to the back of this car. So you can see this lower valence actually kind of wings out and comes up the side to direct air up over the rear tire and over to the duck lid spoiler or duck tail uh, trunk lid spoiler. There we go. It is all a very nice cohesive look and that all works together and all serves a purpose and a function. And yes, it wouldn't be a Toyota with a little bit of Vortex generators somewhere on the vehicle. So it is a very nice look and it is very functional as well. And coming around back to the back, you can see nice LED lights back here as well. Gives it a nice sporty look. We've got a dual exit catback exhaust that I'm gonna just go ahead and drop the sound in of right here. see our center mounted reverse lights underneath the license plate back there and our center mounted high stop lamp is actually in this big ducktail spoiler this is actually a two-piece unit so you can see this is where the standard uh, gr86 spoiler would stop this being the premium gets the bigger spoiler there's our backup camera here is how you open the rear trunk to get in back here you can see it's just over six and a quarter cubic feet of space with a slightly small-ish opening, uh, but we were able to get most of our luggage in here. You'll need to subscribe to see me actually load it up on our family review later this week. You can see there is a false load floor that you can oh, lift up here, and that's where you get fix-a-flat, your cargo net, and some other items down here in and amongst all the foam. It does not look like we get a spare because we do, like I said, get that fix flat. You can actually fold the entire rear seat back down by pulling these latches right here. In fact, I'm gonna stick my head in and show you. Now it is resting on the back of the front seat. So you have to actually get in and work with the front seats to fold this completely down, but gives you a lot more storage space and really makes this the more roomy vehicle that you would expect. Uh, if it were a two seat vehicle. Coming around to the side of the vehicle, I did wanna show you the key. It is a typical Subaru key. So you don't even get a Toyota key. You get a Subaru key with the Toyota badge where the Subaru logo would be, but you get lock, unlock, trunk release, and panic. You can also release a manual key right there, but you don't have to because it is a proximity key. You can just leave it in your pocket. And yes, black vehicles aren't my favorite because they work as a mirror on camera, so I do apologize for that. But you can see this is a proximity key to unlock it. You just put your hand on the back of the door, open it, and there you go. If you want to lock it, you've got these two lines right here, and that locks it. I will note this being a two-door vehicle, uh, I have learned, at least in the settings that this tester is currently set up in, uh, when you unlock the driver's door with the proximity key that does not unlock the passenger door. So if you're interested about someone being able to get in while you're getting in, know that that's not necessarily the case. Before we get in to the vehicle, I do want to show you the driver's door because it's very interesting and unique. We've got this ultra suede up here that's very nice. It's right where you would rest your arm if you're not resting it down here on this leather padding. We've got a nice grab handle right here, a nice cup holder right here in front of your window controls and your window lockout, your lock unlock, and your mirror controls right there. Coming over to the driver's seat, both seats are heated. They are leather wrapped and uh, have the ultra suede interior. Again, uh, that is all thanks to this being the more uh, premium trim. You can see this has a little button holding the uh, seat belts in place so that if someone were to try and climb into the back seat, uh, they can pull the seat belt out of the way, but we'll get more into that here in just a minute. You do have a six-way adjustable driver's seat with a manual height adjustment, manual recline, and a manual uh, slide forward and back. No power seats here in this one with some very nice bolstering. But let's go ahead and get in, get out of some of the noise out there, pull the door closed, and put our foot on the brake, 
push the GR button and see what this thing is like. So if you've been in a modern Toyota or Subaru, you know that is not a Toyota startup. That is a Subaru startup with the chimes and everything that uh, are related to the way this vehicle works. This is also a Subaru head unit for the infotainment screen. It all works rather nicely, but again, with uh, there being three Gazoo Racing GR products and this uh, being co-produced with Subaru and the GR Subaru being co-produced with BMW, getting in both of those, even though it has a Toyota badge, won't feel as familiar as getting in maybe that GR Corolla that we previously tested. You can see we get a digital gauge cluster here. It's actually one big screen for this information, and a smaller helper screen for that information over there. And it is slightly customizable. You can go through uh, different screens over here using uh, the control pad on the steering wheel. But you can see in 254.4 miles, we're averaging 27.4 MPG. Holly actually took this to Dallas and back. And, uh, she will report back on that uh, that whole trip in our family review. But you can see, you can scroll through a few different slides here that give you a little bit of varying information on the vehicle just by pushing these buttons. Then you've got your uh, gap adjustment for your cruise control, which is down here, and then your audio controls over here. The six-speed automatic does have paddle controls that are, well, they sound metallic so yeah i'll give them a metallic plus on that one the blinkers are also from a subaru they go back into place they don't stay clicked uh, up or down so that's something i know people have been asking about in the past over here over my left knee we've got our brightness control as well as our trunk release not a lot of buttons like is typical in actually both subaru and toyota just because of how tight this cabin is Coming over to the center console, I will go ahead and show you these buttons because this also pertains to the gauge cluster. We have sport, snow, traction control, off, and track mode. So here we've got sport mode. You can see it changes the gauges a little bit, but push and hold the track button and it completely changes that gauge cluster layout and turns off the traction control, which is a little bit more fun. Interesting, you can turn sport mode on and off. Uh, while in track mode. So sport mode changes more of the uh, driving behavior. Track mode turns off that uh, traction control and gives you that different gauge layout. So interesting look up there. Moving across uh, to the infotainment, typical of a modern-ish Subaru uh, Starling infotainment system. Won't go too much into detail because we have had this vehicle before, but it also serves as the uh, monitor for your rear backup camera, which is actually rather decent. The uh, Toyota Sienna that we had, that sticker just around 60000 had a much worse backup camera than this $34,000 car does. We do have dual zone automatic climate control, which I really like, with three little knobs there. Very nice. You can see I can turn it on to auto here, but I just don't want it blaring. And then we already pointed out the Gazoo Racing button. Heated front seat controls, manual handbrake, really like that. We do get one other cup holder here, and then a couple cup holders here in the center console, as well as our USB-A interface for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No wireless in this one. I will say the rubberized material up here is nice, but right here on this part of the dash is so incredibly cheap. It's almost embarrassing and it's hollow and it echoes. It's kind of bad, uh, but I can give it a pass on that because I'll never really be riding over there. And then we get a decent sized glove box uh, that holds a little bit of stuff. And then again, go, going over the seats, they're rather nice. The uh, steering wheel is a tilt telescoping, manual tilt telescoping to go with the manual seat here. But you can see at 510, I've got a pretty good driving position here. I, I'm probably reclined a little bit more uh, just because I've been messing with the seats, but this is right at how I would sit in this one. You can see I've got a little bit of headroom here, not bump, bumping my head too much, but unfortunately, eh, the person behind me, not so much. In fact, why don't I go ahead and show you what it's like trying to climb back there. Okay, so going into this strap holding the seatbelt on, uh, I really wish this were magnetic like it were 
was on my Camaro uh, because you have to pop that into place. And if you don't, it rattles on the passenger side the whole time. So I will say the driver's seat does have the handle here to flip and fold it forward, but it does not engage the sliding mechanism. If you really want to get into the back seat, I'm gonna go ahead and show you from this angle just how tight that back seat is from the passenger side. But if you want a, an easier experience getting into the rear seat, that would be from the passenger side because again, you pull up on that handle and it slides the seat forward. You can see we get a little bit of space back there. And before I climb in again, the entire seat back does fold down as one unit. There are no headrests back there. You can see there are top tethers for those outboard seats uh, up in the window. It's a big plastic piece you remove. If you wanna see me install Ch Tucker's child safety seat in this vehicle, Again, be sure and watch our family review when it comes out later this week. But uh, now for the moment of truth, just kind of climb in here and contort myself so that I can sit back here and there's no place for my head to go. Absolutely none, none whatsoever. So I can sit like this and let's go ahead and pull the seat back. So front seat's uncomfortable now because it's a little too far forward. And this back seat, let's face it, it is unusable for adults, but again, to plug our family review coming out later this week, Tucker does ride back here. So I do ride in front of him. You can see what this would be like for our family of three, but that's enough talking about interior, exterior, and all of that. You wanna see how this thing drives out on the road because I know y'all want to see this in the bloopers. I'm going to try and get out gracefully. Oh my goodness. Whew. That's how it's done. That's tight back seat. All right, setting off. So I wish this was a six speed manual, but Polly enjoyed it. So we'll take what we can get with it. We do get the flappy paddles, but uh, this has been a fun car to have. Granted, again, Holly has had it more time than I have, but let's see just how true that six second, 6.6 .6 second zero to 60 run is. Come here to a complete stop on the road, give a little bit of rev and let's go. Oh, traction broke loose. And there it goes. 44, 50, 60, there we go. I mean, Little engine will pull. No, I didn't have it in sport mode. No, I wasn't worried about uh, all the wheel slippage back there. Wasn't prepared for all that. We are on a semi-new paved surface here. Uh, so yeah, we did get some wheel slip from those Pilot Sport 4 summer tires to be expected when you do a powered launch like that. But in reality, this is a fun car. It's lightweight, tossable nature makes it that way it could have more power yes uh, plenty of cars could have more power the nissan z we were testing could have had more power but in our time with it it has been plenty fun and a lot of that is due to its true diminutive size i would say the only real competitor for this currently in the market would be the mazda mx5 miata and that doesn't have a back seat. You can get a hard roof, but not a fixed roof. So if this is important to you, you might look at your local Toyota or Subaru dealership because the GR86 is a very fun car to drive. But I'll tell you what this vehicle reminds me of the most. And that's my brother's 1984 Nissan 240SX. This is as much that formula as I've experienced since his last one that he owned. A small, lightweight, four-cylinder powered, rear-wheel drive, fun Japanese car that you can just put the throttle down and have some fun. This road does bring into question one of the downsides of this vehicle, and that is the road noise. Between those Pilot Sport 4 summer tires and just the lightweight nature of this, the lack of a copious amount of sound deadening materials in here, it does kind of get loud. But that's not why you're buying this car, right? 
Now I already mentioned what the Gazoo Racing Team did to the suspension. We also have two piston front, one piston rear brakes on this. They are slightly larger disc brakes up front than they are in the rear. And all that translates to a confidence inspiring feeling when you go from the tall pedal to the wide pedal. Steering on this small, light, fun car is very predictable and about what you would expect with this driving intent. <laughs> this really is a fun car to pilot. As I said, I have taken one of these on a track already, helmet and all. If you want to see more about that, I will go ahead and link that in whatever corner if you're watching this on YouTube. But in daily life, that's where this really becomes fun because one, it's affordable, you can actually get it, and two, it's just the right amount of power for its size, for its platform, that you can have fun in it in real life without being overly dangerous. Follow all safety <laughs> rules, signs, and guidelines. But yeah, when you see a sign like that twisty one right there, you know you're in for a lot of fun in the GR86 because it really loves the corners. And yes, it's low on torque, but it'll still pull you out of corners just fine. You may just have to rev it a little bit more, but yeah, these Pilot Sport 4 tires are definitely grippier than what we had in that Nissan Z last week. So it's very impressive that you get a better tire on a cheaper vehicle. Now, you probably saw that right there. When the road gets rough, this thing does remind you it's small, it's lightweight, and it's a sports car. So you will bounce around a lot in this. Can't say that I've actually hit my head on it, but I can see how it would be a problem. Again, with the low amount of room I currently have above my head right now. But if you are looking for a fun little two-door rear-wheel drive sports car that looks good, drives equally as well, and is as much fun on a back road as it is when you are stuck in traffic, GR86 may be worth a look. And at a price point of, like I said, this one, right at $34,000, there's not much else on the market that can bring you this much driving fun at this price. So it really is quite the bargain itself. I just hope you or no one you know plans on riding in the back seat anytime soon. Well, if you want to read more about this vehicle, maybe some stuff that did not make it into this video, go find us at gtgaragetalk.com. You can also find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, everything is at GT Garage Talk. You can even go find our podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. But as for me, with the limited amount of time that Holly allowed me to have with this GR86 this week, until next time, gearheads. Bye. Oh, Chevy, you ruined all my fun. Woo. Oh, it's fun. It's a fun car. <laughs> Yes, and for the record, no, I did not turn off traction control. <laughs> <laughs>